Welcome to Lethal Engineering. Today I'm going to show you how I built this, a 3D printed R2-D2 dome. So I found the print files for this R2-D2 when I was perusing Thingiverse. I kind of stumbled upon them. I had always wanted to build an R2-D2, but it seemed really complicated. 3D printing seemed to strike a nice balance of having a high quality R2-D2 as well as easy to build and low cost. This specific design was put together by a gentleman named Michael Badawi. Michael has assembled a complete set of print files as well as a set of instructions to go along with them. There's a OneDrive account that Michael hosts that has all of the print files shown on it, and I'll post a link to that in the description down below. I printed all of the parts for this dome on my Creality CR10 using the Amazon PLA filament. Printing the dome took a very long time. Each of the six like main domed pieces took between 15 and 16 hours each. Part number six of my R2-D2 dome is done 3D printing. Let's take a look at it. So there we go, all six, those six pieces of the R2-D2 dome are all successfully printed. Looks like they will fit together pretty nicely. I just need to print the two pieces that go on the uh, top here. Check that out. This is turning out cooler than I thought it would be. This is pretty awesome. We got the dome printed, lower ring printed, upper ring printed. So this is all six pieces of the dome. They're numbered one through six, get assembled numerically count going counterclockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and sand all these pieces down a little bit and make sure to clean up the edges so that I can then go ahead and glue all six of these dome pieces together and get a nice flush joint. 100 grit to start. I've got all those pieces sanded down and now I'm gonna glue them all together. I'll be using this flat flooring towel to ensure all the pieces are flush when they go together. And I'm using just regular super glue to glue all the pieces together. I ended up using these uh, medium binder clips like this to hold the dome together while I glued it. Let me show you. So just three binder clips on uh, each joint there. Next up is the upper pie piece. I'm gonna print it in two parts that I'll glue together and then I'll then glue that onto the top of the dome. So I finished gluing together the entire dome, including the pie piece on the top. The next step is to sand it all down, um, apply some wood filler in the seams, and then uh, sand some more until it's all nice and smooth and ready for paint. Got that all sanded down. I started off with 100 grit sandpaper to sand it down and then I went on to 220 grit sandpaper. 
The next thing I'm going to do is take some of this filler primer and spray down the entire dome so I can see where all of the imperfections are in it so that I can go back through with the wood filler, fill in those imperfections, and sand it down some more. This uh, primer will really show off though areas where I've got little divots in the print or where the joints in between the pieces haven't come together very smoothly. So after the first coat of filler primer, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go back through with a couple more passes so I can get a really nice finish. There's still some noticeable 3D print lines and the joints in between pieces are still visible. I'll use more of the wood filler to kind of fill out any larger imperfections. So I've got the dome all sanded down and now I'm gonna go apply the silver top coat to it. Oh, uh, something I forgot to mention. There's these little tabs here that need to be removed. They're supposed to come off with pliers, but I've been using these little cutters to remove them. They're just little uh, support tabs for the 3D print for areas where there was a large span. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all those. So after three coats of paint, the silver part of the dome is complete. Now I need to go ahead and sand down all of the panels that get inserted into the dome. So now I've got all those pieces sanded down that get attached to the dome, um, and now I'm gonna go through and sort them out by the pieces that need to be painted uh, silver and the pieces that need to be painted blue, or you know, purplish blue, sonic blue in this case. So all of these will get painted sonic blue, and all of these will get painted sonic blue. All right, coat number one. Coat number two. All right, now next I need to paint all these pieces. All these pieces are getting painted silver. I'm using a Rust-Oleum metallic paint for my silver. And like that, they're all silver. All right, I'm gonna attach all the pieces to the dome now. I've decided to use hot glue because I don't want these to be permanent. There's some uh, cool modifications that I can make in the future to attach servos onto the dome so that these piano pieces actually fold out and the upper pie piano pieces fold out as well um, using servos, which is a modification I might wanna make. Also, the finish isn't super nice and I think I might go through later and refinish the, you know, refinish the entire dome and all of these panel pieces.
So now I'm gonna work on the Wazy Susan that the dome rotates around. There are kind of like four main parts to this Lazy Susan. There's the Lazy Susan itself, which I bought off of Amazon. This is a 450 millimeter Lazy Susan. I'll leave a link for the one I purchased down in the uh, description down below. Then there are several pieces that go together to form the main gear. There's this smaller gear, which will have a motor attached to it and will spin kind of the outer gear. And then there's an upper ring, which is made up of six separate parts and the lower ring, which also has six separate pieces to it. So what I need to do is I need to sand down each of the separate pieces and then glue them all together. And then I'll assemble those kind of three main components um, after that. Okay, now let's glue together the upper ring. The upper ring is made up of six separate pieces. And if you have the flat side facing up, they get assembled in numerical order going clockwise. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to glue this with the flat side on a flat surface. So I'll flip that around, which would then make it one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the upper ring is now all glued together. I'll let that dry and then I will go and glue together the lower ring. All right, so I have the upper ring. Ooh, 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 easy camera. We're trying to film here. Strap you down. All right, the upper ring is all glued together. So now we're going to do the lower ring. So where the upper ring was numbered one through seven going clockwise, the lower ring is numbered one through seven going counterclockwise. That's with the flat face facing up. I will glue this one again with the flat face down so I get a nice flat surface. That's all dry. Let's uh, sand these down to get some nice smooth edges. So I apparently didn't film this next part, but the gist of it is I painted the upper ring in sonic blue and the lower ring in the silver. So to attach these rings to the dome, what I'm doing, the orientation that I've gone with is I have the lower ring with the flat side facing up. And then I have the upper ring with the flat side facing down and then the dome. I'm then using 35 millimeter M4 um, machine screws and running those up through the outside set of holes. It took me a little while to figure out a configuration that was working for this. So I've already found, I've already started one hole and I'll show you how I do the other five. A little four millimeter nut or M4 nut. So the instructions for this part of the build didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I believe I have it correct. So I added four machine screws going through the um, lower ring through the upper ring and into the dome. So there's a nut right here, the um, machine screw coming through, and then there's a bolt holding it all together. And then there's four machine screws 
um, evenly spaced around the dome. So here is my completed R2-D2 dome. It's completed in the sense that I still need to add the Lazy Susan to it, but that'll be in the next video, as well as the electronics that go into the dome, including the TC's lights and the hollow projector lights. I'm really happy with how this dome has turned out. Uh, this has been a great 3D printing project um, that I would encourage anyone with a 3D printer to take on. R2-D2 is such an iconic character in the Star Wars franchise, so it's cool to build, you know, an R2-D2 myself. So this is just the first part of what should be a five or six part series going into the complete build of a 3D printed R2-D2. You can subscribe down to my channel down below to be notified of all the future R2-D2 video updates. And you might consider checking out some of my other 3D printed Star Wars helmets that I've built. Take it easy. <laughs>